Hello ladies and gents and welcome to our impressions video of E3 2015 and well you know I always considered E3 is kind of like a holiday for gamers because this is a time where we all get to see what are all the developers and stuff working on right now or what we're gonna see anytime soon maybe next year and I am partially disappointed but we'll get to the reasons why in the meantime first we'll start off with the things or with the um system before Nintendo, <coughs> um, Microsoft and Sony. So, first of all, Sony. What is there on Sony that you like, Solendi? Um, well, from what they announced, uh, watch at their conference, because I didn't get to watch the ending bit of it, but I watched uh, most of it with my friend before I had to go to bed. Uh, I liked what I saw of Final Fantasy VII, even though it was just a CG trailer, but the fact that it's getting remade is enough for me. I really did like the fact that they're actually, well, they're not really funding Shenmue 3 per se, but they're getting notoriety for it, which, by the way, it broke $2 million in eight hours. Wow. That's, that's <laughs> faster than that's faster than ukulele, I believe. That is, actually, wow, that's saying a lot, actually, because I was thinking that ukulele would be like the, you know, the, the, uh, the um, next thing to be expecting right after, you know, the other Kickstarters, but eh, that's just me. Anyway. I, uh, I don't believe this is specifically at E3 as a demo. I, like I said, I didn't watch the entire thing, so I don't remember. Or if it was there, I didn't see it. But uh, I am very hyped for Ratchet & Clank. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I um, don't really care for the Destiny and Call of Duty Black Ops stuff, but that's just because I don't really care for those franchises in general. Um, they had one more thing. Uh, I'm trying to look at the list right now that we have in front of us. Uh, yeah, they showed off more Street Fighter V, which is always a good thing. Uh, they showed off Uncharted 4, which it looks nice, but I'm not really that big of an Uncharted person. Oh, and how could I forget this? The Last Guardian. It's not dead, and my <laughs> friend's gonna rip me. Uh, my friend's gonna rip me a new asshole for thinking that it was dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's been eight years, but it's not dead. Hey, lo lo look at look at uh, Banjo Kazooie, and now they're bringing up a successor after like what 20 years. <laughs> But that's not made by rare, quote unquote. Well, made by the people who helped make uh, make the game. Quote games. unquote. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll, we'll, we'll put that. We'll put that to rest then. <laughs> and um, the only other thing at Sony's conference, beside all the stuff I just said, uh, the f uh, world of Final Fantasy looks interesting, but I have to see more of it before I can make a final judgment. And No Man's Sky, which looks insanely good. I I really can't wait to play that if I ever do get a PS4 in the near future. Well, um, I for one, when I saw Final Fan uh, World Final Fantasy the, the, at the end, like it looked pretty interesting. It was like a chibi style. I almost, I almost mistook that for a 3DS. But then, um, the thing is, though, near the end, though, what was kind of funny was that I saw the not Ganon. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just from a weird perspective, it looked like Ganon, but I think it was just the lighting that they put into the game. But um, as for the games that I saw, Ratchet and Clank, Street Fighter V. Uh, I've been told plenty, plenty of times that Uncharted is good, so I'm actually just want to go ahead and get the trilogy just to build up myself to the to the next one that's coming along. And if anything, most of the games that I see on this, it's kind of giving me a, a bit of more of a reason to get a PS4 because to this point of time, I've not gone to PS4 because there was nothing that was interesting to me at the time. Same um, here. <laughs> it's just that I don't like you know people were killing themselves over the system, but there was really nothing there. But then that's a, another story for another day. Um, the po um, the thing, but to you know, sum up for myself quickly, you know, Ratchet and Clank. I'm a Ratchet and Clank fan, so I'm looking forward to that. Street Fighter Five for sure. Um, uh, what else is there? There's also Uncharted. I also mentioned. I'm um, not really much on the recent games like Gran Turismo Wars. I uh, I'd rather play Mario Kart where things are a little more spiced up um, in terms of like gameplay experience. And um, in the last guard, <laughs> the um, the last Guardians. <laughs> Pretty, you know, he was actually right. No, it took him this long to finally make a new game, but it was um, introduced. It was canceled for eight years, and now it's introduced <laughs> again. <laughs> hey, when when people when people are you know putting a lot of attention to certain games, um, this the developers eventually turn back to it. Um, well, I, look at Shenmue Three. <laughs> yeah, like that's what I I'm mean. Saying. It's getting kickstarted, but it's still happening. The, but exactly, that's 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 the thing. What I was saying that. Like, it, Sometimes it takes a while before developers actually get around to it because usually they either have projects beforehand or they're, you know, they're busy with other things so they want to get other things out of the way first. But you know, this just tells me that this that they're not forgetting about their fans and who you know what people ask for, you know, regardless of how long it takes. 
Um, and now I think I think with uh, with that um, we'll bring uh, PS4 to a close. Let's go to uh, Microsoft. So, what do you think uh, of Microsoft, Slendy? <laughs> well, from the start of their conference when I was first watching it, I believe the first thing they started off with was Halo 5, which mm, I'm kind of torn between how I honestly feel about it. Because I do like Halo. I legitimately love Halo. It's one of my favorite gaming franchises. From what they showed of me for the campaign, it looked interesting, but I needed more. They only only showed like maybe like a minute and a half of like cam- well, not, that's kind of exaggerated. Maybe like three minutes of campaign footage, mm-hmm. and that's really it. Bes- and bes- that, and also they showed off a new game mode, uh, War Zones, which is basically kind of like a big team battle that you already have now, just a bit more spiced up because. There is, I believe it's 16 on 16 I, or something like that. And wow. there's also AI enemies on the field as well who will also try to attack you. Which, while it does sound interesting, I needed a bit more gameplay from that. From that. And also, one thing that really disappointed me, there was no footage of Master Chief's side of the campaign story. There was only uh, T, um, uh, Team Lock. There was nothing for uh, Master Chief, which kind of bummed me out because I was kind of expecting that, to be perfectly honest. But... Uh- I think I'm on, I'm on the impression that they say that, you know, we've seen a lot of Master Chief, we know what he's going to be about and stuff, so they want to put more focus onto this, you know, this new mystery character, so... Hey, yeah, I, I understand that, but I still th- would have maybe liked a little bit of a tease for Master Chief, but in well, the end, I'm still happy for with the net, with the trailer that we got and the gameplay, and you know, I, I can't complain, because it wasn't bad. So at the end of the day, I really can't complain. Alright, uh, is there anything else you might have taken interest in, or...? Uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, which looks awesome. I can't wait to play that once that finally comes out. It's going on both systems, I believe, PS4 and Xbox One. I believe it's a timed exclusive on Xbox One. So oh. it won't be out on PS4 for a while, if it, if it does come. Hmm. Uh, Xbox, Xbox uh, 360 backwards compatibility. I'm torn on this because I absolutely love it that they're finally doing this, but why was this something that they could only do now? Why could they not have had this from the start? Again, this could be also another. Uh, you can also like just reference the fact that how how the Xbox One first released, but I won't get into that. Um, backwards compatibility is to me that is that is kind of like ever since ever since like the first um, like ever since PlayStation Two specifically, when that first came around, how the uh, or even just not just PS, PlayStation 2 but Game Boy Advance both of them were backwards compatible and that was an amazing feature for everybody you know it just it just meant that we're not forgetting about these older games and they're still like even if if, if your if your old system crapped out well at least you have another system that can play them anyway so exactly to me to me like the fact that they're bringing it up now it's like that should be a standard from like day one a lot a lot of a lot of a lot of systems or at least Nintendo's been doing a good job keeping up with that idea but um PlayStation, PlayStation, you know, Sony kind of forgot about that after a while. I mean, granted, they kind of just started putting putting the PlayStation and PlayStation 2 games release onto, uh, you know, onto the PlayStation Network, so they're kind of forgiven. I think Xbox One might be doing... X, no, the Xbox... Microsoft has been doing that as well. Uh, so. They're doing that now, where if you have a, a digital... If you have a retail copy of the game, you can just put it in the disc. And if you uh, put it in your Xbox One, and if you have digital games on your 360, then they'll automatically show up in your library once they've been approved by the developers. So, so that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I think like it's partially forgiving because at least you can still play those games on your on your newer system. However, why can I use use my physical copies and just do that? I mean, well, I don't know. Well, if that's you, just... no, you can't you can use your physical copy for the Xbox 360 backwards compatibility. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, but I'm, ta- I'm talking about more PS3 because oh, PS3. Oh, oh. Yeah, PS3 initially had that, and then they stopped production of that. Um, I can't remember the reason why. I think there was. A uh, reason, it's to probably to just bring prices down. Yeah, so there was that. It is, I mean, even though the prices go down, I don't, I don't understand why they got rid of that completely. I mean, some people may still want that feature and are willing to spend the extra few dollars to do so. Mm-hmm. But um, to, like I, but again, like I said, backwards compatibilities, I feel could have been, it should be a standard for the systems nowadays because everyone wants to go on the nostalgia trip regardless of how many times they played it in their past. Because there are those times when, like, I'm playing, a, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, hmm, what should I play? Oh. Remember back in the day when I used to play this game? Oh crap! I can't play it anymore because I don't have the system, and my current systems don't play backwards. But that's just a small personal nitpick of mine. Mm-hmm. But it, at at the very least, I'm glad they're doing it now. Yes. It's at late, least, but better late than never. Better late than never, of course. 
Uh, what else, what else is there? There's uh. Uh, f well, f there's rare replay, which, again, something I'm torn on, <laughs> because, <laughs> granted, it's an awesome deal thirty uh, thirty bucks for like thirty games. That's an awesome steal. That's a steal. But at the same time, I wanted Banjo Three. God damn it. <laughs> no banjo for you. <laughs> I know, but well, you know what? At least I get the first two games in nuts and bolts. I'm, well, I'm, I'm surprised you actually counted that game, but um, ah, uh, it's still a banjo kazooie <laughs> game. At the end, of it it still is. Even if I might not like it as much as the other ones, it's still a banjo kazooie game. And you're gonna and, get And you know, I'm also getting later. Conquer and other games. So you know what? For thirty bucks, I, I can't complain. That that's an awesome deal, no matter what. And you're getting ukulele later and on. ukulele later. That could be a replace. That could be your, uh, you know, your probably place will be your placeholder. <laughs> it probably will be. So, um, I also like the look of Recore, which was a new IP by the uh, Armature guys and the people who also made uh, Metroid Prime. I mean, no, 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 uh, Com Comcept, who worked on uh, Mighty Number no. Nine and uh, met the Metroid Prime Armature guys. It looks interesting, but again, my <laughs> my biggest problem with game trailers nowadays, they don't show any goddamn gameplay. All I got was a CG trailer. I mean, granted, it looks pretty, but a CG trailer tells me nothing. It's true. It's very true. It can easily come off as like another game. Oh, I mean, not another game. A movie. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know what the game's gonna play like. So until then, I can't really say I'm hyped. It looks interesting, but I can't say I'm hyped because I don't even know what it's gonna play like. Well, sometimes I understand that because they're the game's not entirely ready yet. Like they're just showing I, off. Like they're just showing off the storyline, and then you know later on, later on near the end of the year, we'll see some gameplay. And sometimes, and then, because usually that, usually when they just show just a, like a, a, a like a, a like a, com, a cut scene, those tend to mean that the game's not entirely ready yet, and we're still working on the gameplay features. So if it's not polished yet, then we can't really feature that. But even then, that's still, I still like to see a little of what you know what working process we made so far. Like how how's things, how the games, how's the uh, the art style gonna be? How's the you know was is it gonna be like an RPG? Is it gonna be like a action adventure? Those type of stuff. Yeah. I just need a bit more. But um, yeah, that's pretty much my wrap up on everything that I really cared about for Microsoft. What about you? Um well, just a little thing about recourse since I'm since I'm most since I'm basically like uh 70% Nintendo fan, it's um I, you know, I'll I'll look at I'll usually wait a little bit and then see what, you know, what does Microsoft and PlayStation, you know, and Sony, you know, had to offer on their system because I do, I do get their systems just to get, you know, what doesn't get on Nintendo because I like which is basically it. everything. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but um, the fact that I hear that, you know, these are the same people that created Metro Prime and stuff. When I when I hear connections like that, it's like, oh, you know, if I like these games on Nintendo, then these games have to be good on these other systems. And to me, to me, it's like, to me, I think that's something, uh, the, you know. The, uh, um, personal thing. I think I think developers should start doing that a little bit more. Um, I'm not I'm not saying I'm, I'm saying like third party specifically because there are those little third party care uh, third party companies that are helping you know first party uh, companies develop their games. Um, if I hear connections like those, those in t those actually influence me more to want to try out those games on other systems, right? And I think that's a I think that makes a good strategy for like you know to to get people to try out other systems in that regard. Because then that'll, that'll help you know expand their horizons and stuff, especially people who are just you know Microsoft fanboys or Sony fanboys, Nintendo fanboys. Because I'm pretty sure I'm I might be a Nintendo fanboy, but there's also those people who are pure who are like Microsoft purists or Sony purists because they grew up with those games more than than the other. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, that's my uh, final my final saying on uh, Microsoft and Sony. So basically the only thing that you were really excited for is for record. That's basically it. Well, Rare Replay too, I like to see. Uh. Rare Replay. I mean, I, I like I said, I'm more I'm, I'm more inclined to get a PlayStation 4 than Xbox One because there's more games that interest me on the PlayStation 4. Plus, I, like if it's not Nintendo, then it's PlayStation for me. So. I wish I could say that, but Halo has me by the balls. <laughs> <laughs> you can't ignore the Chief. I can't. God damn it, I can't. <laughs> Alright, so, with th with that out of the way, PlayStation 4 and uh, Xbox One, it's time for, uh... <laughs> oh. <Fuck>. Nintendo! <laughs> <laughs> Round of applause, everybody. No? Fuck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fuck. You know what, okay, I could tell, I could, I could smell the salt in the air, so... Sony, um, I'll let you open up with this.
Where do I begin? <laughs> Where do I begin? <laughs> Clearly, I'm not as angry as Lanny because he's kind of he's kind of showing that for me. I don't really have to do that for myself. So, okay, well, I'm gonna try to go in as or as much of an order as I can. Star Fox looked great. I'm I'm not gonna deny it. Star Fox looked absolutely fun. It, it looked great. And it's it being developed by Platinum Games. How could I not like that? It hooked, it hooked me on the on the first trailer, which was Star Fox. Like, you know, the one we just saw for E3. Like, that hooked me for the rest of it. I was like, okay, like, you know, this is a pretty good star. Let me see what... I'm, but the thing, at the same time, it's kind of a downfall. It's like, all right, we know this game's been developed, so what else you got? It's all downhill from here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Star Fox looks legitimately enjoyable to me. It looks awesome. And also the part where the puppets try to transform into the Star Fox character. That was legitimately funny. I laughed at that. That was really funny. <laughs> so Star Fox, the reveal for Star Fox was awesome. I loved what I saw. And then it went into Super Mario Maker. Again, I loved what I saw because Super Mario Maker looks absolutely phenomenal. I can't wait to play that. That was good. I loved everything I saw about that. Then it started going downhill for everything after that. Then came... Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes, which it doesn't look bad, but I already had my Zelda, my top-down Zelda fill with Link Between Worlds, so this isn't really doing anything to draw me in. Yeah, it has online and local multiplayer, but I don't think that's enough of a pull for me, mm -hmm. personally. I, I agree. And then there was Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer, which I don't give a fuck about because I'm not really that big on Animal Crossing to begin with. I, I'm, I'm going to at least try one of the games at some point, but like as of right now, I don't really care. And even if, and even if I were to, even if I were to be into the Animal Crossing franchise, I don't think I'd really care for a home designer game. That's not really my style. And then there was Mario and Luigi Paper Jam, which I'm kind of undecided on at this point, honestly. I'm going to need to see a bit more to see where it's leaning towards because Dream Team, while it wasn't really bad, it wasn't really nearly as good as Bowser's Inside Story or Mario Luigi, like uh, Superstar Saga, or even Partners in Time, I would say. So I'm going to have to definitely see more of that. Hmm. And they also did, uh, had the Animal Crossing, um, I think it's called Amiibo Festival or something like that, or whatever it was. I don't really know. I don't, I don't really care. It was, it's basically just Mario Party with an Animal Crossing skin, so... And then we got to Metroid Prime Federation Force. Ah, the troll. <laughs> I think that was like one of the most troll moments. Of God the time damn it, <laughs> Nintendo. <laughs> you had one job. You had one job. And you fucked it up. <laughs> I, you, I can't tell how legitimately upset I was when I saw that. Why would you do that? <laughs> it it looks nothing like a Metroid game. It doesn't even look good. Like I'm not even talking from graphics wise. It doesn't even look like fun. I don't I don't get what they're trying to do here, or why this is even related to Metroid Prime in the first place. I I just don't get it. Well, <laughs> putting aside that, even though I'm I'm absolutely livid at the fact that that even exists. Xenoblade Chronicles, I'm glad they didn't spend too much time on it because we already know everything about it. They just uh, so, uh, showed us a quick trailer, showed us the release date, done. Which kind of sucks that it's coming at the end of the year, but whatever. It's, it's, I can deal. The well, vast majority of them are coming at the end of the year, actually. Yeah, and they did also show off more of Yoshi's Woolly World, which still looks phenomenal. I can't mm -hmm. wait for that. Mm -hmm. I agree. And there was also uh, the Fire Emblem Cross... Uh, it's not Persona. It's Fire Emblem Cross. Uh, uh, Shin Megami Tensei. Shin Megami Tensei, yeah. Which I can't really say because that trailer did nothing to tell me what the hell the game was about. Yeah, I got all I uh, saw uh, were uh, anime uh, chicks, breasts, and skimpy clothing. That's all I saw. <laughs> 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 and lastly, pretty much, uh, what was it? And, oh yeah, there was also Fire Emblem, uh, which has not been which has been renamed to Fire Emblem instead of IF. It's now Fire Emblem Fates, which is coming next year, I believe. Yeah. Which does look a bit interesting, but I'm going to need a bit more gameplay as well for that one too, because the trailer didn't really show. Well, it's a, that it's, a much. It's, a, it's another strategy RPG, isn't it? Well, yeah, yeah, I know, I know that, but you know, I mean, there's probably some new changes that they haven't shown yet, so you know, I'm just waiting True. for stuff like that. But yeah, overall, fuck Nintendo, man. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> 
<laughs> you were supposed to be decent this year. I wasn't good. I didn't expect it to be as good as last year, but I expected it to be better than whatever the fuck this was. Ugh. Go, Jerome. Just go. <laughs> just making sure you making sure you checked off all the salt. <laughs> I'll swallow the rest. Just go. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> okay. So, um, how do I feel about this? Well, since Lenny already demonstrated the I'm um, sure anger. I'm, I also saw the anger during the Twitch. Uh, on the Twitch comments, they were going insane. Like there was like a, it was like at least seventy, like eighty percent haters. <laughs> Can you really but blame them though? I really can't. I mean, I personally think I'm partially disappointed. No, not partially. Okay, I am disappointed. All right, I was expecting. I mean, again, to me, to me, to me, I wasn't. Ex my standards wasn't very high to begin with because first of all, a lot of the games that they already feature, we already knew they were being worked on. If anything, we're expecting them to come in like middle, like in the middle of the year, which is like summertime but they're still being pushed back to as far as the end of the year. Um, another thing was the... Another, another, thing, another, another thing was that since we already got Mario Kart and Smash Brothers, those have been pretty much, you know, out of the way now. We already got, you know, we already got the, uh, the, the major, the major, major expected games to come out, because at this point it's a tradition. Like, what, whatever system comes up is we expect the next Smash Brothers, the next Mario Kart to come in. Mario, well, Mario is Mario, so no, no surprise there whether it shows up or not. However, at least there's Mario Maker, and one thing that kind of impressed me was that they're, you know, they they took what they were features on uh, Mario Maker and took it up to 11, which is really good. You know, it looks really interesting, and I can't wait to see this. I was hoping maybe they might potentially do like a bit of a story mode because there's a game, there's like a fan-based game called Super Mario Brothers X where you can kind of make your own customized story mode in that in that game so i thought what if what if they can do with some mario maker just be a little more creative your own to be able to build your own like you know level selection you know world type of thing those kind of stuff i'm pretty sure they still have more announcements to make before they release it in september but um what i see now is really good and i'm you know i'm looking forward to being able to make my own mario games um what else is there uh yeah what slandy said about Met the metroid prime uh, galactic federation Oh, come on. I saw Metro Prime, and then they just slapped Galactic Federation around. I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and the thing for me is the title came. I'm like, oh my god, it's Metro Prime. Then they yeah. said Federation... Uh, what's it called again? Federation what? See, is that bad? <laughs> we don't <laughs> remember what it is. Uh, Federation Force. Federation, Federation Force. Force, yeah. Yeah, I saw Federation Force, and I'm like, okay. And then it showed gameplay, and then I was like, the fuck... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looks like it has the same, um, you know, gameplay style as, as Metroid Prime, but it's not Metroid Prime. <laughs> it looks like more like it looks, looks more like a competitive game than, than a co-op. I'm not sure what exactly it is going for. Because again, another thing I had a problem with the overall E3, a vast majority of the trailers we saw was purely see like cutscenes. Like, I didn't really see a lot of gameplay, which really enticed me to want to try the game more. I mean. Xenoblade Chronicles X, like they do, they show a little bit, but most of it was still was still cutscenes. And I get it, you know, I know what's the point of making, you know, some part of part of a part of a game is also the storyline. But if I see too much of one side, then it's like, well, what like what it, what else is there about the game besides the, the like? Am I just gonna play the game for the for the cutscenes, or am I gonna play the game, you know, for the for the experience, you know, the gameplay experience? And uh, since I didn't see since both of them were just trailers, especially with like. Because I was hoping that the crossover with Shin Megami Tensei and um, I wanted to see what uh, what Fire Emblem and Shin Megami Tensei crossover might be about, like what's gameplay style. But I've seen none of that. <laughs> yeah, nothing. I've seen none of that, and I was especially from even from the first trailer, I was thinking, okay, you know, they're just starting something, so you know, I kind of forgive them. But I see another trailer. Okay, what's this going to be about now? Nothing is showed but cutscenes. Like, and what what gameplay is do we actually see? Oh, someone walking down a uh, alley. Yeah, I know. Like, come on, guys. They could have they could have featured more. Um, Yoshi's Woolly World. Um, I'm a Yoshi fan. I played since the very first Yoshi's Island game. Um, you know, I played all I played like all the game all the Yo available Yoshi games up to this point. Um, the one that probably disappointed me the most was Yoshi's New Island. Boring as fuck. <laughs> um, I didn't even bother. <laughs> Uh, but now Willy World, I'm thinking, okay, this actually looks like an interesting game, plus it's co-op, and me and my brother tend to play co the co-op games like New Super Mario Bros. and stuff, so I'm thinking, okay, this might actually be fun, because this time it's with Yoshi, so we're looking forward to that. 
Um, Hyber Warriors 3DS. Oh yeah, I completely forgot about that. Well, it's nice to have that game on the go, but I've already played the game. Yeah, I already have <laughs> it, so I'm not really <laughs> interested. Um, remakes are good, but only when I haven't played. Uh, only if its game has been like as you know we haven't played in a while, like a long time ago. A remake of an like a remake of an of an older game, like you know, like an older game like Yoshi's Island. Maybe they did a remaster of that. I can understand it because that's the game since Super Nintendo. But Hyrule Warriors was released what last year? Uh, I'll check the date right now. I actually. believe it was I believe it was just last year. So it's like uh, it's kind of it's kind of close to be one. I mean, it's Hyrule Warriors on the go. So people who haven't played the game yet, you can at least play it on 3DS. I think it might be even cheaper too. That you can just have it on the go and it's all good. Um, there's two extra characters you can play now. And also, apparently, all the DLC and everything is going to be in the 3DS right from the get-go, which kind of upset me a little bit because it's like, well, I mean, well, it upset me a little bit in the fact that, and relieved that, at least I didn't pay all for all the DLC. I don't think I paid any of it yet. But I um, think I only paid for one pack and that was it. Yeah, so it's like, if all the DLC is going to be on a 3DS, then what's the point of me having the Wii U now? So, <laughs> the Wii U version, if I don't have to pay for it anymore. Um... What else is there? And what else? Is there? I can't. Oh, uh, uh, just for information, uh, Hyrule Warriors came out uh, 2014, August 14th. Yeah, so it was, it was last year. Like last it was just summer. last year. Yeah, so uh, to me, that to me, that's a bit too close to having a, a remake or you know, a redo. Uh, Legend of Zelda, the uh, you know, tri like the uh, the latest one right now. Meh. <laughs> yeah. Same. <laughs> Meh. I mean, it looks. I mean the costumes and stuff, okay. Um, the whole co-op mode, all right. Um, but the fact that I've already played Link Between Worlds, I'm kind of, you know, um, Zelda out. <laughs> uh, it's not I'll... so much that I'm Zelda out. It's just that this doesn't look interesting enough for me to want to go back to another yeah, Zelda game. Is. To me, it's just not creative enough. I mean, we, we like basically the thing is uh, Nintendo's been all about the co-op and stuff because you know about family gatherings and. At the same time, we want to be able to play at the same time rather than alternatively like the old Mario games used to be. But it's just that it's basically it feels like it's just the way how it feels. This has been done before, you know. This has been done before, and it's not entirely unique. And I know, I know, at this point, at this day and age, it's really hard to come up with new things. But the way how this thing was, the way how this one was set up, if like you know, this has all been done before, especially in one franchise. So it doesn't buy me enough to want to get it. Um, other than that, I think the only, th the only thing, the only thing that really hyped me up for E3 and was the, the, the only announcement that didn't come, that didn't get announced during E3 was before E3 was the announcements of the new DLC characters and DLC stages and DLC costumes. That, sure. yeah, that hyped me up, and I, and I outright bought that on day one. Granted, as I go through some, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, and download. Well, yeah, because the servers shit. were down. <laughs> well, they weren't down; they were just incredibly busy. Um, yeah, but that's honestly out of the whole Nintendo E3 experience. That's the only thing that really hyped me up. I mean, yeah, I'll guess I'll guess Star Fox. Uh, um, I'll guess Star Fox. Maybe I'll get the Metro Prime just to see what the hell's all about. What you know, what it's all about. Um, I'm not really RPG fan, and I'm kind of waiting to see some gameplay for the for the crossover of Power, Power Emblem and Shin Megami Tensei, and. Super Mario Maker, I'm looking forward. Yoshi's Willy World. So out of all of that, only three games <laughs> am I actually interested in all of that. There was some other game called Yokai Watch. <laughs> yeah, Yokai Watch. To me, when I saw that, I was like, well, this is like basic. To, from what I've seen so far, was this is basically not Pokemon. It, that's exactly <laughs> what it is, actually. It's basically Pokemon, except with ghosts. You know, Japanese ghosts and well, Japanese ghosts and myths. Um, you know, yep. forgive, forgive me if I offend anybody with that, but <laughs> no, I'm that, sure you will. That, but that's all I'm getting out of it. It's like it's just Pokemon with yokai. <laughs> yep. yep. Um, I know they said that they delayed the latest uh, Zelda, the latest Zelda game, the actual, not not the 3DS, the uh, one supposed to be going out for the Wii U. They said not they surprised. delayed. The, yeah, they delayed that one, but I was kind of hoping to at least see some work in progress. <laughs> Be nice if they featured that a little bit, just just so we can see, you know, what what to expect for whenever that game comes out, which is probably going to be sometime 2016, if not the end of the year of 2016. Um, and yeah, and they also mentioned the Nintendo NX. Uh, 
I we kind of fig I'm pretty sure we all figured that NX is already going to be uh, or no NX is not going to be talked about in 2015. Um, Which after seeing this conference, I kind of really wish it was. <laughs> yeah, to me, to me, that should have been like if considering the way considering the amount of announcements we got for this time, I think the NX would have saved them a, a little bit of trouble. <laughs> Uh, if they if they mention a thing or two about what like you know what uh, what else are we to expect for the next system? They don't have to feature what the system looks like, but just give us some extra info on what they're you know what they're going for, or what they or what they uh, plan to do with the system and stuff. I mean, we already know what plans they have up to now, but you know just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So, E3 all in all for me, Sony B plus, Microsoft C plus, Nintendo F. <laughs> And I saw a bunch of that on Twitch too. I couldn't tell if they meant F for fail or fuck. <laughs> uh, both. <laughs> yeah, I saw a lot of people like raging a lot. Like, and I think I not have to give the probably the same ratings as well, uh, especially at the ending. Uh, Nintendo F. I and I was really hoping to change. To, I probably would have raised that up if I saw a little bit of F zero, but no. <laughs> no F zero. All Nintendo's all Nintendo's conference this year made me do is want the NX more. That's all it did. It just made me want NX more, so I can so, get so I can so we can get the taste of 3DS and Wii U out of our mouths. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see when it comes out. Anyway, I think we I think we spoke long enough. Yes, we up. did. So uh, yeah, you guys already know how we feel about uh, about the about E3. Tell us uh, how you feel. <laughs> You know, go ahead, comment with uh, comments. Tell us your tell us your thoughts and feelings about about the whole E3. If you guys disagree with us, if you guys agree with us, feel free to tell. You know, just guys, you know, be uh, just be respectful of everyone else's opinions and such, including ours. Don't so. turn this into a YouTube's comments, please. <laughs> you know, no. All right. So uh, other than that, guys, uh, any last thoughts, Sandy? Fuck <laughs> everything. Well, <clears throat> and as for me, yeah, meh. <laughs> Alright guys, anyway, other than that, uh, you guys have a good day or good night, and thank you for watching, and take care.